This is Kimberly Quinn, host of the Minecraft podcast, and I can't tell you how much fun I have had doing this podcast. I, I started when the world closed over the pandemic in, a, in an attempt to spread some positivity out there and give people some strategies to enhance their own well-being and reduce anxiety and all that. Now, two years later, we're still going strong and now listened to by 52 countries across the world. And I've even helped some of my students get going with their own podcasts. It's super easy to do. And I'll tell you, if you haven't heard about Anchor by Spotify, it is the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. I'll just explain for you. Anchor has tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. When hosting on Anchor, you can distribute your podcast on listening platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. And best of all, Anchor is totally free. Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. It is a ball. Start today. Greetings, Minecrafters, and welcome to another uh, Minecraft discussion today. My name is Kimberly Quinn, and what I'd like to talk about today is the possibility of living without weapons. And uh, obviously, you know, the, the inspiration for having this conversation is, is due to yet another, you know, massacre of babies, basically, at the Robb Elementary School in Texas. And, um, even just starting out this episode, my voice is, is cracking, you know, like, like, uh, all of us in the United States and world right now, I'm sure the rest of the globe is, is watching and also, uh, sending the good vibes, uh, to the families in, in Texas, you know, as, as a mother of five, my heart just aches and aches and breaks for those families of the 19 students and the, and the, and the, uh, teachers, plus all those who are wounded, um, and also the shooter's grandmother. And uh, I just can't even, there's not anything else to really, I, I just, I, I'm, a, I'm at a loss for words, and it's hard to make me be at a loss for words. And the reason I haven't I want to have this conversation is to consider, you know, uh, shifting into a place of the possibility of living life without weapons. And I'm also, I'm going to uh, focus on, you know, the, the Tao. We're talking about the divine connection within all of us. Call it what you want. Higher power, universe. For me, it's God. Source with a capital S. Or um, whatever, okay? The divine connection between all of us and how uh, this is obviously, um, uh, you know, a, obviously a very, very big disconnect way out of alignment and and no question this is an understatement and that's because for me there isn't even vocabulary that can wrap around this i also want to say that the direction this is going is is about obviously uh this is horrific um incident at the rob elementary school and it's not about i'm not going to make any commentary about you know larger scale troops and everything and i am very much in very much in support of in support of our troops here in the States, so courageously serving our country to protect our freedom. And that's not the direction. I, and here's the thing, you know, and it, it, I, I'm very supportive of the troops. What I'm not in support of is semi-automatic weapons of mass destruction landing in the hands of, of teenagers to forever change the lives of innocent people. I, I support of the troops, not in support of AK-47s, and I forget the other numbers of all these just you know, killing machines landing in the hands of teenagers or, or any other civilians. And I'll tell you, um, we don't have any guns in our home and we do live in Northern Vermont and we've been here for two and a half decades. And I had to kind of get used to the hunting culture up here. And that's also just so, so, so different. And I feel because we're Vermonters now that I just want to put that out there. I, I would quiz everywhere my kids went to play, they would say, oh, mom's giving the quiz again. You know, do you have guns? Where are they? How locked up are they? And it wasn't a situation of if they had guns, they wouldn't go there. I tried that for a while, but 
most of the families up here have, most of them have, are hunting families and they're very responsible. They take the class and they're, they get their license and, and all this, all the safety stuff. And I just wanted to say that's a whole, even though we don't hunt ourselves, that's just a whole nother thing. It's a Vermont tradition and pastime. And Vermonters look at this as uh, a way to spend quality time with their, um, you know, kids and partners and friends and all of that. And socioeconomically, uh, many, many Vermonters also rely on this for, you know, to feed their families. And that's just, so I'm trying to want to try to be, I'm being careful here because those are different things. Um, our own military and hunting. What is absolutely sickening and has got to stop is, is these automatic weapons entering elementary schools. And I was reading in the New York times that basically the United States, and I love my country. I love my country very much. I think we are obviously very, very wounded because only here are children afraid to go to school. Only here are little babies, you know, kindergarten, first, second, third, fourth grade, afraid to go to school because they might be shot. And Wayne Dyer, uh, who's one of my greatest teachers, and um, if you hear sullenness in my voice, it's because it's it's because my heart is aching and breaking. I'm kind of doing the best I can here. He talks about the 31st verse of the Tao Te Ching. He said it unequivocally states that implements of violence serve evil. Lao Tzu clearly knew that weapons designed to kill are tools of futility and should be avoided if you choose to live according to the principles of the Tao. And again, change this with whoever fits your spiritual belief system. This includes the design, production, marketing, distribution, and of course the use of weapons in the in the business of killing. The Tao is about life. Weapons are about death. The Tao is a creative force. Weapons are about destruction. Humanity has failed to learn this profound teaching of the Tao Te Ching, which was written when weapons consisted of mainly bows and arrows, spears, hatchets, and the like. And remember that we've, you know, we've talked about thoughts come first, feelings second, and then actions or behavior last, right? So an action, if we move that backwards, action represents a feeling which, re which represented thoughts. So if we think about the shooter who, uh, who uh, the, at least the, the New York Times, or I forget where I read it, doesn't matter. You know, no, there was, there was no record of mental health. Well, that means exactly nothing because clearly any young man, anybody who can, take the lives, violently take the lives of 19 little kids and two teachers out there to make a difference in the world and shoot his own grandmother, has got, had severe, severe, severe mental health issues. And really, um, the shooting is obviously the results that his action, you know, landed with expressing this underneath just overwhelming dark place where this man resided and time after time again with these shooters you know they're they're, they're really not that different most often um most often they're between the ages of eight 18 and 22 usually white though not always as in this case and often from from privilege or at least like middle class type homes ha across the boards after the fact of these horrific tragedies, one after the other, there is evidence of disconnection. There is evidence of isolation. There is there is evidence that these young men, uh, you know, were lone wolves for for a time being, and and what over and over and over again. And we know we know that as human beings, we are wired to be connected. We are wired to be connected. And, when, and whenever, whenever. That connection is not there. There is suffering. When in the absence of connection, there is always suffering. And then Wayne continues uh, with uh, his book, his Ch change, your, change Your Thoughts, Change Your Life is where this is coming from. I forget if I said that uh, because this is obviously very emotional. Wayne says, uh, continues, he says, from his position as an observer and a being of divine wisdom, Lao Tzu recognized that there's no victory in any activity where killing takes place. Why? Because all people, regardless of their geographic location or belief system, 
are connected to each other by their originating spirit. We all come from, retain, and return to the Tao. When we destroy each other, we're destroying our opportunity to allow the Tao to inform us, to flow freely in and through the form we're in. What appears to our ego to be a victory to celebrate is really a funeral, a time to mourn. Lao Tzu reminds us that taking pleasure in winning a battle is aligned with an ego, will to kill. The Tao has only a creative, nurturing, and loving will. On this physical plane, our highest nature expresses itself through the, through the precepts of the Tao, while our lowest nature expresses itself by engaging in the business of killing. And so I, you know, I think, I think the, you know, the majority of us are having the, the same thoughts. You know, how? How is this allowed to continually happen? These, you know, little kids afraid to go to school because they could get shot. It's insanity. And in such, you know, a, a seemingly quote unquote wealthy society that we live in here, it's, it, it, it's not okay in any level. And I say that because we have more resources than other places, supposedly, right? Yet it keeps happening over and over and over again. So there's, you know, the obvious, stop allowing the sales of, of automatic weapons. And I'm not trying to be political. That's not, it's just logic. It's basic logic. You know, I guess the word is magazine, which is the, you know, the, just the rapid fire um, without having to reload. I mean, why, what does any civilian need with that? It's that, That's just basic logic to me. It's not an issue of politics. It's just stupid. It's it's allowing for, for so many more deaths. It's terrible. So that's the one thing. And the other thing is we've got to get on the mental health crisis, the mental health crisis going on in the United States. And I know I work with some of the superheroes at Champlain, and our counseling staff is amazing. They're overbooked. They've got to be tired. They've got to be exhausted because the lines are, are, are three, you know, well, whatever, whatever they are on college campuses. And they do so well to get them in and, and prioritizing different needs. And they're just fantastic. And our mental health situation in, in the United States is it's just good people. Good people, I like to call superheroes, are, are fatigued because the needs are so great. And I just, I just don't know what it's going to take for us to step up and, and, and really get at the source of what's going on here with, with these, with these mass shootings. And, and, and the thing is, I know, obviously it's easy, you know, the retrospect thing and looking back, but the thing is these shooters, they don't do this overnight. If you look at any of, any of them, I remember way back with, I'm sure it wasn't the first one, but the one that comes to my memory, the kind of was one of the ones that big that started it off was the Columbine shooting. I remember the, you know, etched in my mind and on the, on the, the news and uh, oh, it was Dylan Klebold and Ryan, I forget their names now, but there were journals left and they were, they had been talking about it. The trench coat mafia, this was, they were, they were saying lots and lots and lots and lots. And the Sandy Hook uh, shooter was also talking about things and, and shooting ranges and different things. There's, it's, it, there are clearly, you know, there's a gradual kind of amping up along the way. And we've got some work to do, you know, and we've got a, a real, real, real issue on our hands of young men as an endangered species right now, really an endangered species because they are clearly many, obviously we're talking about the shooters right now, um, clearly very, very depressed. And when they don't have a record of mental health issues, well, okay, so you didn't, you didn't seek out help, which is a whole other problem in and of itself. Clearly, they are in such a dark place that everything that, that would override and otherwise, you know, that would override these acts is, is there's a wrench thrown in there because they are so, so depressed. And depression in young men looks way different than it does in young women. And we've got to get on it with this. And they're angry. And when anger is also um, repressed for a long time, right, this also can turn into depression. And then there's the disordered thinking that goes on with depression. I do lots of that, um, not on this, in this particular context, but with my students explaining how the triangle of distorted thinking that goes on with depression. And it, 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 it becomes like a situation like when uh, scuba divers dive down too deeply, too fast. They lose track of which end is up, literally don't know which way is up. So they have to blow bubbles to figure out which way is up. So that's sort of the, the visual for what happens when somebody comes deeply, deeply clinically depressed. 
and we've got um we've got a big big gigantic task in the United States of dealing with depression in young men and we don't have another second another second to not get going with not one more second can be wasted we need to get on it right now with the young men in this country who are depressed you know we really need to get on our get on our, our game here with noticing some of the early early signs of depression and 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 sort of the isolating which has gotten even worse with the pandemic in general right we're isolating and there are some smaller things that can escalate you know uh with you know uh, verbal behaviors a lot a lot of swearing we all swear so we drop the f bomb we stub our toe but a lot a lot a lot of swearing is a sign that somebody's got some anger brewing and maybe maybe even some depression definitely some anger obviously there's a long way to go from dropping the f bomb to 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 acting to, you know to a to a mass shooting obviously however we've got to really really start to start to get on it with this and uh, Wayne says, I believe that Lao Tzu was, was not only speaking about physical weapons, but also non-physical behaviors that are just as destructive. These include violent words, gestures, and threats that aren't a part of humankind's higher nature. If you change the way you look at your world, you must include noticing your language and your demeanor. Do you demonstrate that you're a person who values life in all of its costumes? Are you someone who wouldn't take up any type of arms, be they physical or not, against another, unless alternative alternative means have been exhausted and then if forced to injure another are you able to feel compassion for your so-called enemy weapons designed to kill are inconsistent with the very essence of the Tao. thus you must make every effort to be peaceful and harmonious with its life-giving energy oh, uh, and we've also got you know social this is obviously a big big conversation nothing that can be solved in one episode. And I, my whole thing here is just trying to do my little minuscule grain on, you know, grain of sand on the beach contribution, because I just feel like things have to be, have to be said here. And, you know, there's no question that the internet in general and social media absolutely plays a role because of the social comparison and all of that. And definitely video games. And I'll tell you, we've got, you know, at Champlain, we've got I, the last I checked, we were the number one gaming school in the country, and and um, and that's all fine. So I want to do a disclaimer there too. Is obviously, you know, every single person who who plays video games is not necessarily you know set up to go you know do a mass shooting. I'm not saying that. That said, we know for a fact, research based, that when people rehearse violence, they are more quick to act violently. And we know this from little, you know, research on little kids. They're more apt to use violent language. They're more apt to uh, be more aggressive, even if we're not talking about the shooting thing. We're not, but the thing is the rehearsal makes it easier. It makes it easier. Even in the military, they do all, obviously they rehearse intentionally so that when they come into actual combat, that that's easier. So here we've got kids getting a hold of, you know, Grand Theft Auto and um, others, the rest of my students tell me about, but the other thing is the, the young kids are getting a hold of things that they shouldn't have anyway till 18. And even then the prefrontal cortex is not fully developed in young men or young women until they are 25. That is a fact. So they're half baked bread or actually two thirds baked bread. And they are rehearsing violence when they're, so they're, when they're not developmentally done yet. Think of, think of that. And we also know, oh, I forgot his last name, Dylan something. He was 17. This was a long time ago, back when the first Grand Theft, I think it was the first Grand Theft Auto. Uh, and, and again, we're not saying everybody who rehearses them can do this. Although he and his lawyer said this young man, he also had quite a background of bouncing around all kinds of foster families. He, he was abused. He had a whole different, all kinds of stuff going on. He rehearsed that game. I forget the amount of hours, but it was a lot. And the, the killing that, that he, that he took part in was exactly the way I think it was, um, oh, what was it called? San Fran. So uh, anyway, it was the first Grand Theft Auto, exactly the same routine, walk to the right in the, in the police station and carried out the mass shooting in exactly the way as it was in the Grand Theft Auto. Now, is it always that way? No, our, our video games affect affecting 
are the level of violence in this country? Absolutely. Research-based. What we look at and take in, we become. And what comes, I always, I've told my kids since they were little, what comes in does not go out. So even if something much lighter than the conversation we're having, when they were little and they went over to a friend's house because we didn't allow really almost any TV, they were going to watch something. Let's say they were teenagers and the, the, you know, the kid wanted to watch The Exorcist. I'd say, you know what? Mom's not always going to be there. You need to make these choices because that stuff coming in is not going to leave. It's there like a DVD player in your head to just run, 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 run. Well, that's not different with video games. And now what's different if, is the graphics have come so far that to the brain, it, 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 I'm going to say it doesn't know the difference because in some level you know that it's a screen, but it's becoming very, very close because the graphics are so, so fine-tuned at this point. The bloodshed anything looks very, very real. And now these shooter games are first-person shooters, so it looks like you're looking through the sight in the gun. That is rehearsing big, big violence. So is it any big surprise that our country has been has become so violent? And again, I'm not saying it's it's all social media. I'm not saying it's all video games uh, and, and all cell phone use and being disconnected in general, even if it's not a violent disconnection. We have become so disconnected. It's a combination of all this stuff. And I don't know, honestly, I don't know when we're going to wake up, you know, how many more children have to be lost and families' lives turned upside down in h- horrific trauma. You know, I just don't know what it's going to take for us, us to really, you know, come together and, and focus on the connection, which is the source, or actually the flip side, the disconnection that is the source of these shootings, because that is the source of these shootings. For all the issue, all the ingredients of it that I just named, whenever there is disconnection, there is inevitably suffering. And then Wayne says this, change your need to defend yourself to a stance of realizing that this is evidence you're ignoring the teachings of your source of being. Refuse to consider using weapons of violence in any form by noticing your language and abolishing hatred from your vocabulary. I actually didn't allow our kids to use the word hate like their whole lives. And and this is why this is why. And I they could say dislike, they could say anything but not the word hate, hatred. And then they looked up some words like abhor, detest, loathe, as long as it wasn't hatred. And then he and then he says, replace defending your right to possess and use arms with an attitude that all deaths from such instruments are signals of detachment from the wisdom of the Tao. Their detachment they they get between us and our source with a capital S. When enough of us reach a critical mass in our thinking so that it disallows the existence of weapons. We'll be moving the direction of our world. No longer will we be able to evaluate the planet's level of civilization by the sophistication of our weapons. Instead, the measurement will be on the Tao scale of how well we were able to feed and love each other. Then, being civil will authenticate the root word found in civilization. Also, since I'm not being into preachy, I'm just going to tell you, we... For us, in our family, we didn't allow video games at all. And eventually, they wanted a few, so we allowed it. We allowed Madden, which was a football one. And I think we allowed some kind of cartoony type of thing. But we never, ever, not a once, allowed any kind of shooting game. There were just a handful of them, and they were sports-related. And uh, you get to, and again, I'm not preaching. I'm just saying, from psychologically speaking, research-based, we know that when we rehearse violence, we get better at it, just like anything else. Like we say with playing the violin or speaking Italian or whatever, right? If we rehearse violence, we're going to get really good at it. And so it is uh, a suggestion to really be paying attention, if you have kids, to what they're playing and what they're doing. Also, just movies, because we get desensitized. The more violence we watch, not only do we get better at it, you know, as far as games or, and um, in reality, if you're into gun ranges and things like that, you get good at it. But also we become desensitized. We see, you know, violence in movies over and over and over again. It gets easy to watch. And, you know, WWE, there's all kinds of stuff written about that. And uh, they'll say, oh, well, it's, it's staged. It doesn't matter. It does not matter. At a certain point, all the parts of the brain are taking it in. And if somebody has been traumatized, it's, it's, it's kind of uh, lighting a spark with all those old memories all over again. So it's very, very important to be mindful, very important to to be mindful of what you allow in your mind as well as what you allow in your, your children or teenagers' minds as well. 
And then I'll just wind. I don't usually go this long, but it was kind of this one. It's just important. And uh, St. Thomas Aquinas, one of my favorites. I took a whole class on him at St. Mike's, actually. He says this, and we'll wind up with, How is it they live for eons in such harmony, the billions of stars, when most men can barely go a minute without declaring war in their mind against someone they know? There are wars where no one marches with a flag, though that does not keep casualties from mounting. Our hearts irrigate this earth. We are fields before each other. How can we live in harmony? First, we need to know we are all madly in love with the same God. And then I have one request, which I don't usually do. In fact, I don't think I've ever done it, honestly. It's, this is just a unique situation. Uh, when, Wayne, when, when Wayne, Wayne Dyer says, do the Tao now, um, I'd like to, to request that uh, anyone who's listening say a private prayer today, or if that's not your thing, and send the good vibes or devote a minute of mindfulness or whatever that means for you for um, the victims of, of, the, of the Texas massacre and their families. And, or if that's a, a different situation where somebody was killed violently by a weapon, but to offer that up, because I think if we do that as a group, I really believe there's a big, there's a lot of power in that. And uh, that, you know, love in the end will prevail. That's it. Blessings on the Texas families. This is Kimberly Quinn signing off from Northern Vermont. <laughs>